Yes, we are back with Why in the Morning, and my name is Barry Moses. It's Barry Moses, every social media platform. It's time for Strength of a Woman, and the Strength of a Woman of the Day. If I was to introduce her, we'll take the whole day. The credentials are amazing. Uh, but uh, in a few words, Grace uh, Faraja is a mother of three, and uh, she holds a bachelor's degree in accounting, a master's degree in global organization management, and currently PhD student at the global uh, in global human and social services. She was born and raised in Congo, lived in East African countries, Burundi, Kenya, and Rwanda. But today, she's in studio with me for Strength of a Woman. Karibu sana, Grace Faraj. Asante. All right, I hope I didn't miss anything. No, 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 you're uh, right. I know you sit in a number of boards, uh, which we'll be talking about in uh -huh. a few. Uh, Absolutely. But yes, you are in Kenya for two weeks, yeah? Uh, I've been here since March uh, 17th. March 17th? Yes. Oh, you, st you still have two weeks in Kenya before yes. you go back to... Uh... Yes, to North Carolina. All right, so you live in North Carolina. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know where to start. If we should start uh, with what you do in North Carolina or what you're doing in Kenya currently. Your choice is yours. What are you doing in Kenya since we're here? Um, I came here for two purposes, for my um, research work. Uh -huh. And also I came here for, um, to start a chapter for the African Girls Work Foundation in Kenya. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. Uh, what do you do in North Carolina for a living? I work with the uh, um, Samaritan Post International Relief. Uh -huh. It's a Christian organization working mm -hmm. um, over 130 countries All right, around so the world. You're a staunch Christian. I am. You are. Born and raised. Born and raised Christian. Yes. I hear your, one of your parents uh, was or is a missionary. Yeah, he's uh -huh. still a missionary. Mm -hmm. uh, my pastor, he actually even have 11 churches here in Kenya, uh -huh. in different places. In different places in Kenya? Yes, including uh -huh. Trukana, they including have four churches. Including Trukana. Yes. Have you got to visit any one of these churches? Yes, I've been uh, in Gidurai and mm -hmm. Kasarani. Gidurai and Kasarani. Yes. All right, which one was the most uh, lively? They are all, they are all lovely. <laughs> they are all li lovely. Yes. I meant lively, but anyway, you've answered the question. <laughs> so what people don't know about you is before you were this degree holder, uh, master's degree holder, and PhD uh, holder, mm -hmm. a lot has happened in your life. Mm -hmm. Born and raised in Congo. Mm -hmm. uh, how long did you live in Congo after, after, after you were born? Until uh, 11 years old, bef uh, that's when uh, the war broke down in Congo. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the Mobutu, uh, mm -hmm. when Mobutu died, then mm -hmm. things changed and we mm -hmm. had to leave uh, mm -hmm. because of the fight that was going on. Mm -hmm. Then we lived in uh, from one refugee camp to another, at mm -hmm. least, yeah, Congo, Brazzaville, mm -hmm. Rwanda, and Burundi, and then here mm -hmm. in Nairobi. So we, um, since 1996, mm -hmm. we experienced uh, refugee life. Mm -hmm. Together with my family. Together with your family. Yeah. How big is the family? I'm the firstborn. You're the firstborn. So we are five. You are five. Children. Something to look up to, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh, amazing. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, uh, <coughs> three girls and two boys. Three girls and two boys. Yes. All right. So which is the first country you moved to after the war broke out in Congo? Congo Brazzaville. Congo Brazzaville. It's our neighbor. Uh, uh -huh. with People Congo don't seem to get the difference. Yes. And so they mess up even yes, Africa. <laughs> you know, I can excuse an American for not knowing Congo Brazzaville. Yes. And that one. Uh, but maybe you can break it down for the people. We uh, we there's a real River in between us, uh -huh. and uh, we are really neighbors. So uh -huh. it's very hard for people to really remember there are two Congo. There's mm -hmm. two Congo. So one is the Republic of Congo, mm -hmm. which is Congo Brazzaville, mm -hmm. and ours is Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Right, which one borders uh, Rwanda? Uh, Congo the DRC. The Congo DRC. Yes. All right. So you moved to Congo Brazzaville first. Yes. And then. Right and then after, Rwanda. Then Rwanda. And Congo is very big. Mm -hmm. Even though uh, uh, there's a side where uh, Congo DRC is, um, uh, there's a border between Congo, and it's another side of Congo. Uh -huh. But where we were in Kinshasa, it's mm -hmm. closer to Congo Brazzaville. Uh -huh. So before we, before we lived in the refugee camp mm -hmm. uh, in Rwanda, mm -hmm. uh, it's like from coming from the west to going to the east. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, mm -hmm. so I'd like to know, uh, life is really tough in the refugee camps. Absolutely. I've hosted some people who uh, came from Kakuma, uh -huh. right here, who are musicians now, mm -hmm. courtesy of a uh, project by Octopizo. Shout out to Octopizo, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, they told me life in the refugee camp is tough, but it's even worse for women and children. Absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, it's worse because I, I tested life uh -huh. as a young girl. 
um, uh, living and uh, wearing one cloth uh -huh. from Monday to Sunday, uh -huh. not changing, uh -huh. and also um, our hair girls we love. You make, have, but yes. there's nothing you can there's do at that particular we can do point. And hygiene no is make, also yeah, no uh, yeah, hygiene and water. It was, was very difficult. No clean water. Sometimes we shared uh, a bottle of water uh -huh. together with the family, or uh -huh. maybe food. There was no food, but and you, as you know, for girls, it's worse. Uh, we all know there's so much that girls mm -hmm. need. Uh -huh. The needs so of girls, did, and they're always endangered species. Yes, so Everybody there was knows. no support uh -huh. for that. Uh -huh. So our mothers struggled uh -huh. so much during to protect that you guys. to protect us. All right, yeah. uh, living in the in the refugee camp, did you understand what was going on at that particular point? I did not understand much mm -hmm. because we used to cry. Why are we running away from our own country? Mm -hmm. And until Later, when we uh, we we arrived in Burundi and Rwanda, mm -hmm. and then our parents started explaining to us what was going on, the fight. Because I was just um, 11 years old, mm -hmm. so but still, it was hard for us to understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. We were just there with the suffering and mm -hmm. praying and uh, uh, hoping for the best, mm -hmm. hoping that we will get to a certain place where we will sleep mm -hmm. with no. Um, shooting uh -huh. and all that where with uh, where your life is not in More danger safer, yes all right after rwanda you moved to which country we went to burundi you went to burundi yes all right at what point did you get to carry on with your education because i'm guessing you're a young girl yes and uh Right here, right now. Yeah, I think you are the most educated in the room. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> <I'm not> so. <laughs> uh, but uh, how did you get to carry on with your education? Are there schools in these camps? No, there was no schools in how the refugee camps. How did you get camps. to go to school? Uh, what happened is that uh, we used to continue just uh, Sunday school, uh -huh. and then the Sunday school will continue to help us in reading and all that. All right, yes. the power of the church. Yes, very important. Church has contributed uh -huh. so much, and mm -hmm. I always give thank to God to to the leadership of the church because they they take they feel the burden of refugees or mm -hmm. any person who is, who is going through difficulties, uh -huh. and they take and I feel like the same way Jesus when he came on earth. Uh -huh. He did good, and mm -hmm. the same way the church also has taken over to mm -hmm. do good to uh, to people who are, are suffering. All right, mm -hmm. I'm quoting an author from uh, from uh, well, this country that borders Israel. Uh, this one, ah. Egypt. Not Egypt, it borders uh, Israel. Lebanon? They have, uh, uh, no, 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 Lebanon. Um, uh -huh. oh, we are almost there. <laughs> but you know this country. They have a problem with Israel at the mm -hmm. moment. Oh, so this author was like, uh, post-traumatic stress uh, is, a West, is, not, is, a, is a Western thing. Mm. Then I was like, it no. It's not a Western thing, even in Rwanda. But just uh, before, before, before <laughs> I, was, I was thinking the same, before I read yeah. the article. Mm -hmm. So when I read the article, she, uh, she was like, uh, uh, we need to set standards for mental health yes. or mental disorders. Yes. Because when you go to her country, mm -hmm. you can't say these guys are going through post-traumatic stress. Yeah. Post-traumatic stress is for uh, a soldier mm -hmm. who leaves his country, uh, who leaves New York, mm -hmm. goes to an Arab country mm -hmm. to fight, mm -hmm. and then he goes through all these things, and then yeah. he goes back to his home, which yes. is peaceful. That is post-traumatic stress. Yes. But for somebody whose life is always in danger, yes. always always fighting for mm -hmm. his life or find, trying to find something mm -hmm. to eat. You can't consider this post-traumatic stress. Uh, so uh, what do you think about this? Do we need uh, to help these guys mentally and do we need to set different standards I as well? I will tell for a fact that uh, I think that's one big portion that uh, our community need to make sure that we have, um, we have um, uh, people who can take care of uh, the PSD mm -hmm. uh, communities. For mm -hmm. example, in Rwanda, mm -hmm. with the genocide that happened, mm -hmm. we, they have so much, mm -hmm. so many people that have been going through the PSD. Mm -hmm. and, and Rwanda has created offices or um, uh, department, that, uh, counseling department, mm -hmm. and who, be t who takes care of those people. Mm -hmm. and, but again, I would say even the local community, we mm -hmm. don't have to wait for 
uh, the government to build mm -hmm. this big office, mm -hmm. but even our local community, because we as communities, we understand one another, mm -hmm. and we understand what my neighbor is going through, uh -huh. and we are the one who can help our neighbors uh -huh. to do something. So we can always get into simple groups, support groups, Absolutely. and help each other and talk about our problems. Like in churches, they have mm -hmm. what they call Bible studies, uh -huh. uh, the weekly Bible studies. Mm -hmm. During those weekly Bible studies, they can choose one of the day and just a counseling day or a discussion day about just normal life. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many, so many people mm -hmm. who go through the PSD uh -huh. situation. All right. So the reason I brought this up mm -hmm. is as much as we try to feed the refugees, we try to help them with the maze, we try to help them with something they can eat, we also need to care about their mental state as well. Yes. We, this is something we need to give a uh, priority. For a me, priority. Uh, as a former refugee, uh -huh. And uh, I know what I went through. I uh -huh. lived here as a mm -hmm. refugee in mm -hmm. Kenya. And uh, and that time, we did not have many of them mm -hmm. uh, from, my, from, my, from my area. Mm -hmm. But now we have, I believe, more than even 4,000 mm -hmm. refugees from East Africa, mm -hmm. including Congo, DRC. Uh -huh. So refugee people, go, they, they, they have gone through so many things like during the war mm -hmm. losing their children mm -hmm. losing their uh, family members mm -hmm. and when they come here first of all they don't have uh, this language barrier mm -hmm. some Number of them one. don't even speak Swahili mm -hmm. and English is another level mm -hmm. and many of them have never gone to school mm -hmm. and when it comes to women from my area my country it's worse mm -hmm. because <laughs> I'm not going to um, they're considered second-class citizens. I'm not going citizens. to elevate myself, uh -huh. but I've done my research enough to know that I think I'll be either the first uh -huh. or the second uh, uh, girl in my community, in my tribe, uh -huh. with a PhD uh -huh. level, uh -huh. which means there's, like, the, we are very... There's room The percentage for is very low, uh -huh. uh, which is sad. And because they believe in early marriages uh -huh. Number one. from 14 years old mm -hmm. and it's still happening until now mm -hmm. and uh, early marriages to uh, a man who the girl did, did not even choose or uh -huh. make a choice but parents still uh -huh. make no. decision for the and girls. And some of them are even second to or third wives or fourth wives. Yes mm -hmm. and, and, and there's a, a gap in an age gap uh -huh. between a, a girl and, and, yes. the, and, the, and the husband. Yes. All right, which is something that is very backward, retro retrogressive. Yeah, I feel, uh -huh. I feel so much pain for you that. You feel so much pain when you see this. This yes. is why you have a project, and this is the reason for this project that you have, and this is the reason you're here actually today. Absolutely. All right. So tell <laughs> me about this. And thank you for this. inviting me. No, you're welcome. You're always <laughs> welcome. If you're doing something great to the community, we don't have a choice. Thank you. Uh, what is this project about, and uh, how is it going so far? Yeah, African Girls Hope Foundation, it's a project that is mainly to empower education of girls, mm -hmm. especially the girls who are in the villages, because I believe mm -hmm. the girls who are in the villages are the most uh, forgotten girls. Mm -hmm. uh, girls who are here in Nairobi, in big cities, or mm -hmm. any other places, they have opportunity to meet other uh, NGOs or, or maybe even a private donor mm -hmm. to support them. Mm -hmm. But uh, in rich places or uh, villages, mm -hmm. it's very hard for uh, the girls who are there. Mm -hmm. It's hard for everybody, but yes. it's harder for the girl. It's more worse for the girls. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and because um, sometimes the reasons why is, like in my village where I come from, mm -hmm. transportation is a big issue. Mm -hmm. So for an organization to go there, it's mm -hmm. difficult. Mm -hmm. And especially with also the insecurity that's still there, mm -hmm. it's hard for uh, NGOs to go there. Mm -hmm. So um, so the NGHF or African Girls Hope Foundation mm -hmm. is to empower education of girls by supporting them with a free Christian, organ uh, Christian uh, uh, education. Mm -hmm. uh, by we, sup we pay the tuition mm -hmm. and, and all school materials mm -hmm. so that we can have uh, as many as possible girls in school instead mm -hmm. of these girls sitting home mm -hmm. and waiting for um, for the traditional practices to to go on mm -hmm. on them so we have some of your work uh, on screen yes, I think those are this, my girls. <laughs> these are your girls you call yeah. them your girls yes and they're doing quite well so far uh, so we up have to 200 girls, girls. Uh, up, 
up to 100 girls. We have 100 girls uh -huh. in DRC in five villages. Uh -huh. And here we have uh, four girls in Kenya. Uh -huh. And uh, visit, last week I visited Sasimu uh -huh. Children's Center mm -hmm. down there in, I, I believe, Kasaram or uh -huh. of which they are going to be part of uh, the program. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I love the story about Sasimu Children. That's why I selected it. It's mm -hmm. a very... Um, it's a very impactful uh, 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 uh -huh. uh, uh, right. institution that I selected. Uh -huh. Yes. How does this work? So I see the profile of this girl. I see something like two hundred and something dollars. Oh, uh, that's that's uh, um, on my birthday. Uh -huh. Instead of people giving me a gift for my birthday, my birthday is uh, February 15th. Uh -huh. So I did a GoFundMe. Uh, GoFundMe is a way of raising funds uh -huh. uh, uh, for any cause. Uh -huh. So for my birthday this year, I, I had to uh, share with my friends, uh, uh -huh. I don't need any gift. Uh -huh. Send your gift to you are my good foundation. As you are right now. <laughs> <laughs> so don't need something. This is something mm -hmm. really creative uh, yeah. to do. Because people are willing to give you gifts, but they forget that there's somebody that needs it yes. more than you do. Yes, so absolutely. So you just try to uh, to enlighten them through yes. this, right? Yeah, here. through this. Uh -huh. So and you can donate uh, on the website. You can donate on the website, mm -hmm. and this uh, GoFundMe it's a specific. Uh, um, a, a specific website to just raise funds mm -hmm. but other people donated directly to our website mm -hmm. yeah so and uh, um, it's amazing mm -hmm. you know uh, when you share a story the I f there's a there's an impact there's a pow this power in, mm -hmm. in in a story uh -huh. so I believe that um, soon enough mm -hmm. God will bring more and more and more donors I have no fear because uh, this cause uh -huh. I know where I come from because I went through the same difficulties of dropout. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Actually, here in Nairobi, uh -huh. that's when I started. Um, I, I realized that there are so many children, not only suffering from the traditional practices, but uh -huh. also suffering from financial crisis, uh -huh. like I was when I was in Desa University. Uh -huh. So I had dropout many times uh -huh. and uh, not uh, completing my exams. Uh -huh. But by the by God's grace, uh -huh. through uh, Afrizo, I was a member of Afrizo, and I'm uh -huh. still I'm still a Afrizo uh, alumni. Uh -huh. So Helen Tawali is my uh, she was my teacher, and she's still my best friend, and uh -huh. we are she's very been strong here. together. An amazing soul. Yes, uh -huh. Th through singing, I was able to to get a full scholarship to complete my education at this university. Power to all the <laughs> wonderful women out there. Shout out yeah. to you, Helen <laughs> Tawali, and everything you're yeah. doing out there in Easter in secret, things that we we'll might never know about. Yeah. We just know about one particular story right here. Yes. And uh, yes, so 100 girls so far mm -hmm. that have managed to, uh, to, to, get, uh, to get to go to school yes. and improve their lives. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's hope for Africa? One day we are going to have a fully educated Africa. I'm going to challenge all the women, mm -hmm. professional, or let me know it's called professional because it's the heart that mm -hmm. work. If you're a, a woman of God or a woman with compassion, mm -hmm. God has given us power mm -hmm. to change the world. Mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela say, um, education is the most weapon that we can use to change the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. And I believe if we come together as women mm -hmm. and even men, uh -huh. we need your support. Yes. Yes, we, we need your support. <laughs> <Far to the people. laughs> yes, uh -huh. and I believe that um, one hand uh -huh. can do cannot do uh, what five hands can do. Uh -huh. So if we come together as women or uh -huh. men behind us mm -hmm. and support what we are doing, mm -hmm. I think we are going to have a better generation mm -hmm. uh, that is coming. A better generation. Yes. Education for a better generation yes. that is coming. Mm -hmm. White54 underscore channel on Instagram and White54 on Facebook. White54 uh, underscore channel on Instagram. Hashtag is white in the morning. Hashtag is Queen's Wednesday. Uh, your views, your comments, and your questions are invited. Are invited. Please direct them to Grace uh, right here of uh, Raja. Uh, so, uh, undergraduate Daystar. Yes. Uh, master's degree. In global organizational management. Uh -huh. And a PhD in global human so social services. All right, but services. Uh, undergraduate, you did it in Daystar. Yeah? In Daystar, yeah. All right, the accounting. Master's Master's degree, what did in you do? In the US. In the US? Yes. And then your PhD in the US as yes. well. Mm -hmm. All right, so being somebody who has lived in Africa, gone through all these things in Africa, mm -hmm. and then you've been to the US doing your PhD, mm -hmm. uh, people blame uh, all these African problems <laughs> on the West. Yeah. Including myself. Mm -hmm. 
I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> You'll find me complaining, complaining so much about mm -hmm. the West and how they're imposing debt on us mm -hmm. and how they colonized us mm -hmm. and then they left some leaders to still colonize us mm -hmm. and the rest of the things. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your take on this first? Uh, you know, sometimes we complain too much uh -huh. and ourselves we don't, we don't make any step to make a change. Mm -hmm. Obama said mm -hmm. that don't wait for another person to bring change. Mm -hmm. You are the change that the world has been waiting for. Mm -hmm. So we, um, uh, I always, before I complain, I ask myself, okay, what, what have I contributed? Mm -hmm. What is my contribution to this world or to my community or to mm -hmm. my friend or to my family? Mm -hmm. And then I take a step, okay, what can I do mm -hmm. to advocate mm -hmm. for this issue or for this cause? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, the same way with African Girls Hope Foundation, mm -hmm. I know um, there are so there are so many people who are like, okay, you are doing this because you, you want to fight uh, gender stuff mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. traditional uh, uh, what we believe in. Mm -hmm. No, I my heart mm -hmm. is to bring change to our community, to elevate uh -huh. education so that we can have a better family. Uh -huh. There's a saying that says, when you educate a man, you educate an, indi an individual. individual. When you educate a woman, mm -hmm. you educate a family, a community, and a nation. Yes, so, uh, and the saying, I agree with so much, because mm -hmm. I've seen the impact of educating uh, yes. young girls, even in my village, yes. and the kind of things, the kind of impact they've yes. had uh, back in the village yeah. after they make it big. Yeah. Uh, Another thing I'd like mm -hmm. to know, what are some of the misconceptions uh, that people have over there uh, about Africa that you deal with every single day in your life? Oh my God, why? They, why they think we live with animals. Uh -huh. They think we live with animals, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Which is a fact, you have a, uh, we have a And some people park. ask, oh, do you, uh, did you ever see a TV? Uh -huh. So they have, especially an educated, people who are there, uh -huh. because we have also some people who are not educated there, uh -huh. who have never gone to school. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have them too. So they don't even uh, understand if uh, Africa, Africa is a country or, or is a continent. continent. Uh -huh. When you tell them from Congo, some of them will be, oh, Congo, what, what is Congo? Mm -hmm. So um, there's so much to educate them too. Uh, there's so much to educate them about. Yes. All right, so we need some African <laughs> studies in their schools Absolutely. at least. And we need to represent Africa also in a yes. very positive way, uh, display the good things about Africa. Yes. Talking about uh, Africa being a continent or a country, mm -hmm. uh, we are working towards uniting Africa. I've seen uh, Swahili has been introduced in South Africa in the curriculum, mm -hmm. so there's progress in yes. speaking one language. It's going to be better. Yes. Do you think this is going to help us deal with uh, all these dictators, all yes. these warlords and, uh, and everything else? I, th I believe it's going to help us because l uh, there's power in, in, in languages. Uh -huh. uh, the first job that I, I had where, when I uh, resettled there was mm -hmm. Um, I, I was a, uh, a contractor of translating in the co in the federal courts rooms uh -huh. from one, from all my six languages, uh -huh. English and vice versa, uh -huh. and it pays six languages, <laughs> my brother. I hope you got that one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And from that, I I saw the importance of knowing uh, lang different languages, mm -hmm. and when you know language, you are able to reach out to. Uh -huh. N to all the nations, uh -huh. and like you're ready here, to consume different cultures. Yes, yeah. I feel when I'm in Kenya, I'm Kenyan. You're Kenyan. I can speak uh -huh. Kenyan. Uh -huh. I, I understand some Kikuyu or uh -huh. some Kamba. Uh -huh. There's so many similarities there, uh -huh. and I feel home uh -huh. when I go to Congo. Uh -huh. Oh, it's. I speak Lingala and uh -huh. I sing Lingala. I can uh -huh. sing in all those languages. So there's power in language. There's Let's start with the language as we proceed. So mm -hmm. it's progress. Yes. Let's unite Africa through Swahili. Yes. Because I think it's the most common. It, yes. uh, it has a format. At least you can learn it in school yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. You're a musician as well, as we mm -hmm. come to the end of this. Yeah. Music is your passion. Uh, tell me more about your musician or your <laughs> musical side. Um, I started singing when I was a very young mm -hmm. girl, uh, very shy at mm -hmm. that time. I'm no longer shy for, go for the gospel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> I can see how you look uh, on screen, I can tell. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, um, and uh, being a missionary daughter, moving mm -hmm. from one place to another mm -hmm. and planting churches, mm -hmm. like from scratch, mm -hmm. uh, I learned how to worship and that's how I came to know mm -hmm. uh, that I have a gift. Mm -hmm. I would sing and people will 
be surprised mm -hmm. and you and got your scholarship <laughs> as well <laughs> yes i got my scholarship <laughs> through music <laughs> and uh, and in in the u.s also i do have um, african i'm also a founder of african gospel artists mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i bring wash african worship leaders together mm -hmm. and i do also invite other uh worship leaders mm -hmm. from different countries mm -hmm. and they join us every year mm -hmm. for a weekend of uh, uh, wash, uh workshop and uh worship uh, experience wonderful uh, wise, a lot of wise words from you. Uh, you quoted Nelson Mandela <laughs> and Barack Obama. Yes, <laughs> they're my favorite. <laughs> Those are your favorite <laughs> authors and your favorite leaders. Yes. These are the people you look up to. Mm -hmm. All right, so as we wind this up, your camera is number four. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to share with the people uh, how they can get to support your projects mm -hmm. and how they can find it on social media. Yes. And if you have a website, I prefer the website because from the website we can yes. get the other social media handles. Your camera yes. is number four. Uh, your time to shine is this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, thank you so much, mm -hmm. and I do really appreciate at this time. And uh, I would like to invite you to be part of uh, African Gazo Foundation. And uh, uh, you can reach out to us through our website. Uh, we have our email address there, um, and also uh, we have our platform donation on online. But again, um, our our website is our. Uh, African WW African Girls Hope Foundation dot com. Mm -hmm. When you go there, you have all our information. And if you have any question, please send us an email, and we have a team that will be uh, respond to any question that you have. And also, we have a Facebook mm -hmm. uh, and an Instagram. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the website, you have all the information and details. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, please reach out to us, and we'll be able to share more and details. Right. And also here in Kenya, um, we have a chapter that we are starting. Please. Call us or send us an email and we'll give you details for that. Thank you very much, Grace, for coming through. Thank you and, so uh, much. Say hi to the family when you get back to North Carolina. I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank All you. Right, so we have come to the end of Strength of Woman today. We had Grace Faraja, who's doing amazing, amazing stuff for the girl child and uh, girl children in the refugee camps in particular. If you know somebody who has a story that is impactful to the community at large, contact us through Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on Instagram, and Y254 on Facebook and don't forget the hashtag why in the morning so we can highlight the story on strength of a woman that is if she's a woman <laughs> or she's a queen <laughs> I go by the name of Barry Moses or it's Barry Moses social media platform Calamie Valley is coming up next with Girls Talk a hot topic you don't want to miss this